Hi everyone! This module is the largest and most complex of the semester. You'll be working towards two different tests at the same time. You'll be studying for a practical test, which is where you will have to be able to identify the various structures on your anatomy list. There are a lot of structures in your nervous system not included on the list, so be sure to stick to the list provided in the O and O's. You will also be studying for the lecture test, which will cover the functions and structure of the nervous system. It's helpful to learn these two things together so that as you are learning, for example, the different regions of the brain, you're also learning what those different regions do. And that way you're integrating that information so it's easier for you to recall later on. To keep you on track, the work will be divided into three parts. The first part will get you started learning the lecture material. The second part will continue lecture material and have a heavy focus learning the anatomy for the module. This second part will end with a nervous anatomy practical. The third part will finish covering the lecture material. This will end with a lecture test over all of the nervous information you've been learning. Since you will have already taken a practical, there will not be any ID questions on the lecture test. However, you still need to know those structures and where they are located. And knowing this will help you to better organize the information in your memory about how each of these structures functions. Let's take a look at what you're going to be doing in this module. Make sure that you are in the Module 5 section of the Content tab. Here are the outcomes that we are going to be covering. Here is some important information about what you do and do not need to know about the cranial nerves. Make sure that you read over this. As we move down here into the content of this module, you'll notice that normally we have two or three submodules, but now we have six. There's a reason for that. Part of it is because there are a lot of optional opportunities to practice for these tests, and I wanted to keep those separate from everything else so it doesn't look like you just have this massive to-do list of things you need to accomplish. The first thing you should do is open up the Resources folder. You'll notice that there are Lecture Resources and then Lab Practical Resources. Let's take a look at the Lecture Resources first. Keep in mind that this is a large module and you will have the material broken into two tests practical test and a lecture test. You'll be preparing for the practical test and the lecture test at the same time. You have your lecture O and O's, then your possible short answer test questions, some notes to get you started, as well as some PowerPoint slides, and then we have some PowerPoint slides for physiology practice. Let's go back into the resources folder and take a look at the lab practical resources. Now you'll see here we have the outcomes and objectives for the anatomy practical, and I want to take a quick look at that with you. We will focus in on the spinal cord, eye, ear, and brain anatomy. While you are learning the different anatomy and how to identify those structures, we will also be learning the functions of those structures so that we are doing two things at once. This will help you to retain that information about functions for the lecture test. So these are the structures on the spinal cord that you need to be able to identify. The structures on the eye and the ear that you also have to be able to identify on an image of a dissection or a model. And then we have brain anatomy. Now in this online course, we use cadaver images through Anatomy and Physiology Revealed on Connect, as well as models of the brain. You'll notice that there are a couple structures here that I'm pointing out that you need to know what they are, but you don't have to be able to identify them on an image. There are a lot of structures within the brain that we are not covering in this class because we just simply don't have time. You could spend your entire career just studying the brain and still barely scratch the surface of what we know. As you go down this list over here, these are the structures that you need to be able to identify. Be sure to stick to this list as you study for the practical test. Let's go back to the Anatomy Resources folder. Here are some tips on how to study for that practical test. The main rule of thumb is again to stick to the list. Make sure that you practice, practice, and practice writing out those names repeatedly so that you can consistently spell the structures correctly. Here's my suggestion on how you should break it down. Start by playing a matching game by matching structures that you see on images to those that are on your Anatomy practical list. Then start looking at those structures and see if you can point to them and name them without looking at the list. If you do have to refer back to the list, make a little check mark or a star next to it, then you know those are the ones you really need to do some more reinforcing on before the test. Once you can point to them consistently and name them, then you'll start writing out the names while you're pointing at them, and then make sure to always check your spelling and rewrite each structure's name multiple times until you can consistently spell them correctly. This is where flashcards can be a problem if you rely on these too heavily. Flashcards can be very passive and do not require you to spell out names. So if you only use flashcards, you may be able to recognize or say the name of a structure, but if you cannot spell it correctly, it could be marked incorrect. 
Sometimes one letter different completely changes the meaning of a word. A good example of that is two, two, and two. Those all have very different meanings. Then you just keep repeating step three as many times as needed before the practical test. Focus on one region at a time. For example, sit down for 15 minutes and just study the spinal cord or eye anatomy. Break the brain up into multiple study sessions, such as the cerebrum and the brainstem. Work on learning their functions at the same time. It will help you prepare for the lecture test and it will give your brain meaning to the terms. We have some videos here that walk you through the brain that's in the small head model in your anatomy kit. You can just pull that in half and pull the brain model out. There are some images of the models that we have available on the campuses, as well as cadaver images that you will find in APR. A walkthrough of the brain whiteboard that is in your anatomy kit, and then some other images of models. Remember to focus on one region at a time and practice writing out the names a lot. Now back to the resources folder. As always, there's a discussion board here that you can use to communicate with each other. I do pop in there fairly regularly to see if I can help out at all, but reach out by email if you need help from me so that I'm sure to see it. Let's go back to our nervous module here. Now we're going to look at the to-do folders. I've broken this up into three parts. Each part has materials that are due during that week. This is where having a printed copy of your detailed due dates list from the resources folder in the orientation will be very helpful. Also, be sure to pay attention to email reminders and announcements that are sent out regularly. In part one, we are going to focus mostly on lecture with some anatomy, but this is material that you should do before you ever take the practical test. Due dates for specific assignments are always highlighted at the top of each to-do folder. Once you get through nervous part one, you're going to move into nervous part two. This is going to have a heavier focus on anatomy and is going to end with your nervous practical test, which is in this folder. Then you're going to move on to nervous part three, which is going to finish up any loose ends on the lecture material and is going to then end in your lecture test. Notice that the first half of your bonus relevance project is due during this module. If you want to take advantage of this bonus opportunity, I strongly recommend that you keep working on it one module at a time as you go through each module, and then you're not having to build the whole project right before the due date. If you don't remember what needs to go into the project, you can just go back up here to the module on that project. You are watching this video right now. This link here takes you to a video that gives you an overview and a breakdown of the nervous system and all of the divisions. It's really important that you understand all of the different divisions and what they are responsible for regulating in the body. Make sure that when you watch that video, you practice drawing the flow chart of the different divisions, and then you practice it a few times afterwards. Understanding the divisions and their relationship to each other is going to be critical to layer information on in later lecture videos. There's a recommended reading in the smart book. Then we move into action potentials and neurotransmitters. This is going to include a couple of lectures, one on action potentials where I simplify this complex process by drawing it out. I would suggest that you practice drawing this right along with me and then practice drawing it out afterwards several times as well. I've had students come back later on in their programs and tell me that being able to pull that drawing out and redo it again helped them refresh and understand that material very quickly when they needed it for a later class. Then once that signal gets to the end of a neuron, we have to cross the synapse, so we have a video on that. Again, practice drawing it right along with me and again a few times afterwards. We will then discuss myelination and different types of neurotransmitters, and then there's a fun activity here called Mouse Party. You're going to go to the University of Utah to their Genetic Science Learning Center website. When you go into Mouse Party, you're going to see a bunch of mice that have been partying a little bit too hard. Choose at least a couple different scenarios and walk through the steps of looking inside the brain of the mice. You can choose which ones you want to do and can do all of them if you're interested. It does a really nice job of giving you a visual representation of vesicles that are containing neurotransmitters and how transport proteins help to move these molecules in and out, as well as protein receptors that are going to receive and bond to those neurotransmitters. There might be a question on the test about this activity. Then if you go back out here to our to-do list for part one, there's a recommended reading on action potential. Then we're going to move into brains. This is going to cover functions of the brain as well as the different parts and how to identify them. So we're shifting into some lecture material layered on top of learning the anatomy for the practical. We'll talk about different protections of the brain, and then we get into the structures and functions of the cerebrum, and then the internal parts of the brain, such as the parts of the diencephalon and the brainstem. There's a table here to help you summarize the different brain functions. There's a recommended reading on the brain, then you have your required nervous system assignment here. You need to complete that nervous system assignment by the deadline posted. There is a required discussion board for the nervous system. 
You'll be researching a nervous system disorder and sharing what you learned. You cannot repeat other disorders that have been used by your classmates. If there is a particular one you want to research, you can call dibs by creating a thread in the discussion board post with your name and the name of the disorder as the title of that thread. Just make sure that you make a note to return and finish the post before the deadline. Make sure that your post covers all parts of the requirement for the assignment and that you are writing your post in complete sentences. This is a W class, which means that there is a writing component because it is important that you can communicate in writing in your chosen field. Posts that are not written in complete sentence will be considered incomplete and not graded. Discussion board posts need to be clear and understandable to the reader, and maybe the most important thing of all is that it must be in your own words. I will run a check on any questionable posts. If your post is more than 50% copied from another site, it will be marked as a zero. Posts must be 20% or less from another site to avoid deductions. You'll notice that your relevance project part one is due before the practical test, so make sure that you don't miss that deadline. This is an optional activity, but it's a big one because you have the opportunity to potentially earn up to 10 points for each part, which would give you a total of 20 bonus points over the course of the semester. This is significant and is more than 20% of some of your test grades, so you might want to make sure that you complete that just so that if you're on the fence with your grade, it's going to help you to get over that fence. Once you've completed part one, then you're going to move into part two. There is a short assignment on Connect that introduces you to APR. This web page will then walk you through Anatomy and Physiology Revealed and how to set up your anatomy list. Once you set up your course specific list, you'll be able to practice and quiz yourself on just the anatomy listed for this course. Be sure that you study all structures on your anatomy O and O list because I did not include some of them on the APR list as I didn't feel the images they included were ones I wanted you to study for this course. So make sure you also practice using the videos, images, and models provided in the course eLearning site. When you click on McGraw-Hill Connect link right here, you're going to go to the My Course Content in APR. Then you should see something that looks like this. You're going to add a list. Then you're going to enter this code for the course content and then enter this name for your course content list name. Then that will actually set up just a list of anatomy that you need to know for this class. Then every time you go into APR after that and you go into the My Course Content, it's going to pull up anatomy for this course and not the thousands and thousands of other structures that you are not asked to learn for this class. This actually walks you through how to set up APR and some of the basic functioning of it. And then it shows you in this video how to use the quiz function in there as well, so you can do some practice quizzing once you have set up APR. Let's go back to the Part 2 folder. The next topic is Special Senses. Now in this class, we don't spend a ton of time on Special Senses, so we don't really get into taste. We talked a little bit about touch with the integumentary system. We're going to focus here on the eye and the ear, so there is a video on the anatomy of the eye and then on vision. Then you should take a break, go back to the Part 2 To Do folder, and do your virtual lab eye dissection. Then come back to this page to finish up learning about the ear. First, you're going to learn about hearing and balance, and then you're going to go back into the to-do folder and complete the Connect Overview assignment. Here are some additional videos that you might find helpful. You may want to make a note to come back to this page when you're studying for the lecture test as well. Last in this folder is a recommended smart book reading on senses. Then you're going to prepare for the practical test in this folder. There's a practice quiz that's not required, but I basically walk you through the parts of the cerebrum again, but do it like it's a quiz and then give you the answers at the end. So get a piece of paper and practice spelling out those structures as I go through the brain. Then we have some optional review activities and then we have a practice practical. The practice practical is not on connect. This is just like your test in D2L. In fact, you'll need to use the Respondus Lockdown Browser to take it. This is going to have questions just like what you're going to see on the test, and if you do well on it, you could potentially also earn a bonus point on that test. If you don't do anything else, do the practice practical, because I'm literally giving you a sneak peek at the test. There are some practice quizlets, and then the link for the test right below that. Once you've completed the nervous practical, then you're going to move into part three. Here, we're going to wrap up some loose ends on the autonomic nervous system. This is where knowing those different divisions is going to be really important. So if you don't remember those, go back and practice drawing out the flowchart of the different divisions before you move on into the new lecture material here, because here I'm going to be talking specifically about the sympathetic and parasympathetic branches of the autonomic nervous system. There is a worksheet here to walk you through ascending and descending pathways within the autonomic nervous system, 
And then I have information here to help you with remembering the difference between afferent and efferent. It's a really common mistake that people mix up, so just think A before E in the alphabet. So you have to affect something before it can feel the effects of that. Then we wrap up some other loose ends with the spinal cord, reflexes, memory, and some other odds and ends. Then there's a worksheet here that you should complete for your own studying just to make sure that you understand the parts of the spinal cord that you need to know. Back in the to-do folder, there's a reflexes lab, a recommended reading on the autonomic nervous system. Then we have a couple of miscellaneous loose ends on the nervous system lecture here. There is information on nerve organization, plexuses, adaptation, essentially topics that only took maybe a slide to cover, so they didn't really justify a whole video on their own. And then there's a video here that can help you remember the cranial nerves. You will need to be able to know the 12 pairs of cranial nerves, their names, and their major functions. I will not mix them up, so give you a cranial nerve with the wrong number, for example, just to try to trick you. For this, I would recommend making slips of paper with the names and numbers and others with the functions. Shuffle them and practice putting them together correctly. There is a required homework assignment in Connect on cranial nerves and spinal and brain injuries, followed by a recommended reading on nerves. Once you finish that part three, then you're going to want to practice and review and get ready for the lecture test. Don't forget about lecture material that was covered in parts one and two, such as action potentials and the divisions of the nervous system. We went over functions of the eye and ear structures, so make sure that you go back and review those. Because this is a big module, the testing folder has review activities broken up by topic. You can study the brain and cranial nerves and cerebrospinal fluid and then go in and do this practice review, for example. And then there's an optional Kahoot. Again, the top scores will get a bonus point. Don't forget, I need to be able to ID you from your name and you can redo the Kahoot as many times as you want. There are some quizlets that you might find helpful, and then once you finish the video you're watching right now, the test will show up right below that quizlet link. As you're working through the material, make sure that you reach out to me if you have any questions or are struggling with anything. I'm here to help, so don't suffer in silence. The more specific your questions are, the easier it will be for me to help you.